Welcome to the Happiness Podcast. I'm Dr. Robert Puff. Hate, what an incredibly powerful emotion. I'm not even sure we can imagine how many wars, crimes, acts of violence have occurred because of hate. Hate is such a powerful emotion, and yet one that in some ways can permeate people's lives. And do you know the saddest thing about hate? It actually destroys the person who carries it. And revenge that people seek so badly when they feel hate never healed a wound. Like you, I've been exposed to hate, as I'm sure you have, but two times really stand out to me. When I was going to graduate school, I worked for a year at Trenton Psychiatric Hospital. It was the first time I'd ever worked at a hospital setting, so I was very new to everything. Well, one day, one of the patients was severely acting out, and they were concerned she would hurt herself. So being a guy, and fairly strong at that age, they asked me to help restrain her. So I held her down on her shoulders while they were putting restraints on her. And during that time while I was holding her down, she looked me right in the face and started spewing the most hateful things I had ever heard in my entire life. I had never felt such hate from another person, and I'm sure if she had the chance, she would have killed me on the spot. Thank goodness the nurses were there, because as she was spewing that hate at me, they calmly told her, Now you be nice to that boy. He's a very nice boy. And it was a lot better after that. But boy, I had never felt such hate in my entire life. I mean, obviously it was coming from something in her past and it had nothing to do with me. But it was so intense, I really was shaking after that for quite a while. Hate can be such a powerful emotion. And when you see it in its raw form, it can truly be overwhelming. The second time I remember seeing it in its raw form, was a few years after that. I was living in Southern California and I was driving through a strip mall and I passed a car with about five people in it. Well, there was a woman driving the car and she looked at me as we passed each other with so much hate that I went from calmly driving to intense fear because I could just feel how badly she wanted to hurt me and she hated me. Even though we'd never met, I had no idea who she was. We didn't even have any interaction that was negative. She just passed by me in her car, and I was in my car, and she just hated me beyond belief. It took a long time for that feeling to go away, but it was so intense, because hate is such an intense emotion. In many ways, hate is like a sickness, because it's a lack of unconsciousness, It's like the person's consciousness is shut off and they're just raw emotion and that raw emotion is aimed at other people or at something else and it's just so intense. They don't really care about anything or anyone or any consequences, their own or the other person's. It's just pure unconscious emotion with no regard for anything or anyone. And it can cause so much damage. Again, all the wars in the world, all the crimes that have occurred under hate, we all have seen them over and over again. They're so painful and they can cause so much damage. So how do we heal from hate? If we don't want to engage in hateful behavior, how do we protect ourselves from hate? And two, how do we heal from it? They're both very important. Well, the first thing is protecting ourselves from people that hate us. The first thing to remember when someone truly hates us with intensity It's like an illness, it's like a mental sickness that is just not something you can reason with. When the other person is in a hate mode, you're not gonna change their point of view. You either need to remove yourself or get help, like the police or someone that can help you, or at least protect yourself, but don't engage in hate. Hate fired at another person when they're hating you just leads to a lot of collateral damage and people get really hurt. A better approach is to set up very strict boundaries. The best one is just to leave. Once someone is spewing hate at you, if you can, leave. If not, then make sure you're protecting yourself, but not with hate, with just really good boundaries if possible, and especially if you can, get help. I mean, there's hotlines out there, you can call the police, you can talk to authorities, but try not to engage with it. That's not a good way to go. 
I mean, engaging it with hate, protecting yourself. Absolutely. Not letting them hurt you. Of course. But because they hate you, hating them back is not the path to go. It is far better to remove yourself and then realize that you're going to have some healing to do because you've been exposed to one of the most powerful emotions that humans can express and it can cause so much damage. So getting involved with support groups, talking to people that love you, getting into therapy, whatever you need to do, realize it's kind of a PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder that you're going to be dealing with when you've been exposed to hate. It's just overwhelming and shocking. And giving yourself time to heal is very important. I remember once I had a person that really lashed out at me through a letter and it was very upsetting. But at the time I was going on a long backpack trip and I used the first couple hours of that trip because I was carrying a stick just to pound the ground and let that feeling get out of me because it really hurt me what this person did through that letter. And I used those two hours of hiking to let that feeling dissipate and get out of my system. I needed to heal from the hate that was spewed at me. We all are affected by hate, so it's important to heal from it. But I think it's also important to make good choices about hate. What I mean there is, because of social media, particularly YouTube now, which is a wonderful site, but at the same time, some people post hateful encounters with other people. They can be interesting, they can be in some ways entertaining, but be careful. Exposure to hate over and over again of people on the internet may not be that good for your soul. And it might be better to stay away from videos showing people being hateful towards another person. I know it can be entertaining, but at the same time, it can cause a lot of, again, upsetness in you. Part of being happy in life, because if we're listening to this podcast, we probably want to be happy. But the part that it entails is exposing ourselves to good things, positive things, uplifting things. Exposing ourselves to negative, harmful things is not good for us. And I do want to add one point here. Sometimes people are in a powerless situation with someone that is very hateful. It is good to reach out and get help. There are so many different support groups out there that can help us when we're in a very negative situation. And if possible, seek that help because sometimes we just get used to hate and we think it's normal. Hate is not normal. It's a very dysfunctional emotion. And if you're being exposed to hate, try your best to get support and get away from it. Now, let's say we have hate and we want to heal from it. What do we do? Well, first off, I want to differentiate between hate and anger. We can be angry at someone, very angry, for what they did to us. That's an emotion. Hate is an expression of that emotion towards another person. I know there's different definitions for hate, but I'm using it in that way. It's when we act out on our anger. We can have anger. There's actually nothing wrong with being angry at someone, particularly when they hurt us or do things that are unkind towards us. But lashing out on another person in a very hateful, hurtful way to hurt them. That is not the path of healing. What we can do, of course, is absolutely set boundaries. We can get politically involved. We can do so many things when we feel there's unjustness in the world. But the best people, think of like Martin Luther King or Mahatma Gandhi. These were very powerful people that changed our world without spewing hate. Hate is an emotion that we just don't want to engage in. Again, our feelings are our feelings, but there's really three steps to our feelings. The first one is, I feel what I feel. Okay, that's fine. We all have emotions. But the second step is using our intellect to say, okay, let's explore this emotion. Why do I feel this way? What's causing me to feel this? Is it justified? Is it right? Am I projecting on from something in my past? Am I creating a story that I don't need to create. And then the third part is using wisdom to say, okay, now I see my emotion. I've thought it through. What am I going to do? And there's so many things we can do that don't have one ounce of hate in it. We can talk to the person calmly. And when we notice that hate is arising during the conversation, we can take a break. 
Brakes are awesome. And then we just continue the conversation until we feel like at least we've been heard. It may not solve anything, but we feel like we've been heard. We can get involved in social groups or political activities where we can really make a difference in the world without spewing hate. We can stand up for things. We can make a difference. Another approach we can take is just by setting boundaries. If there are people in our lives that are causing us to hate, Perhaps it's time to sever those relationships and say, it may not be good for me to be in this relationship or in this friendship or this job because I feel so much anger. And that anger is being acted out in a hateful way. And I don't want to do that because I realize that's a path of suffering. So I can set boundaries. I can remove myself from the situation. I can talk to people. And probably most importantly, I can get help from my anger so it doesn't lead to hateful acts. If I look at the intense emotion that I'm feeling, I'm very sure it has a basis in real causes, but are the causes the things that I'm facing right now? They may be. I mean, someone may have done something to me. I mean, think of rape. Rape is a horrible thing that happens, and the person afterwards will feel so much anger and hate towards the person that did that to them. But then again, sometimes when people do things to us, it has very little to do with what they're doing. It's more the sense of we have wounds in our past that we need to heal and that intense emotion that may lead us to want to hate that person and act out on them is because of something in the past and have very little to do with what they're doing to us right now. And so our job, always whether we're being hurt right now or it's something in our past, is to heal from that hurt not to engage in hateful acts, we can, again, I want to emphasize this very strongly, we can and ought to set boundaries. Absolutely. We can pursue them with justice. Absolutely. We can protect ourselves. Absolutely. But not with hate. I really think if you watch people like Martin Luther King or Mahatma Gandhi, they stood up against horrible injustices but not with hate. They just kept doing what they knew was right. And that's the path that we need to take. Because hate destroys the person who carries it. And revenge never healed a wound. And we want to heal. We don't want to keep carrying that hate. So here's one last thing we do. It's a little bit more advanced, but it is something to consider. And this is what works for me, because believe it or not, I really don't have anger or hate towards anyone on the planet. And I have had people do things to me that weren't very nice in my life, but I don't hang on to or really hold anger towards anyone. I may feel a little irritated with people for a few moments when they do things to me, but it goes away very quickly. And how I'm able to do that is I realize that we are conditioned beings. What I mean by that is, they are the way they are, and I am the way I am because of my conditioning. And if I had different conditioning, or if they had different conditioning, we would both be very different people. So if I'm going to get mad at them, I'm going to get mad at their conditioning, not at them. Because we're really just conditioned beings. Right now, we're being conditioned to learn not how to hate. And then we realize that, oh, I don't need to hate. There's other things I can do. But I'm changing because I'm changing my conditioning. I'm beginning to see things differently because of what I'm listening to today, or at least I hope so. And with conditioning and change becomes the loss of hate. But it's so much easier not to hate a person or not to get angry at a person when you realize it's just their conditioning. They really, in many ways, have very little of any choice in the way they turned out. And I can't control their choices or what they get exposed to. I can't. But the one thing I can do, this is the thing I have power over. I can choose what I expose myself to. And I'm going to start exposing myself to love and kindness. It's a way better path and leads to a lot more happiness. But the trick is I do need to expose myself to it. I need to learn about living a happy life and change the conditioning that I was raised with and have been exposed to. We can change who we are, but we can only change ourselves. And we do that by actively pursuing things 
that are good for us. It's like eating good food. We've been eating candy all our lives. We decide it's time to eat fruits and vegetables. It's like that. We just have to make good choices throughout the day, and the good choices will change our conditioning. But when someone else is lashing out at us, we do realize it's their conditioning. It often has very little to do with us. And we just set our boundaries, we let it go, and we find that we don't have to hang on to hate. We don't even have to feel hate. We just need to live in the present moment and live well and have beautiful lives, one day at a time, one breath at a time. Thank you for joining me on the Happiness Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the podcast, please go to happinesspodcast.org. And until next time, accept what is, love what is.